Hello, everyone. Welcome to AITech1.com. My name is Sumit, and I'm here with my new video in Salesforce Aura component or Lightning component. And the topic is that how are we going to create and deploy the Lightning component or Aura component using Visual Studio? You might have seen my previous videos in where I've explained that how do we create a lightning components or aura components by using developer console. But I received a lot of requests, a lot of uh, inquiries, and they would like to know that how can we create an aura component by using Visual Studio Code? And if it is possible to do that, how do we deploy that? So that's why I decided to create the, uh, to create this video for that so that I can explain you things. So those who are familiar with the Aura components or those who have already gone through my previous recordings based on Aura components or Lightning components, they might be familiar with that uh, we have done. We have created a Lightning component in order to add a record in an object. And, there's an, and in that recording, that video, I explained that how do we create a Lightning component? How do we create an Apex class? and how do we from the how do we how do we invoke the server side controller class from lightning component so i will be following the same process the only difference is this time we'll be using visual studio code so the very first thing i have done is i have already created so uh, this is my visual studio code and i have created one sample component named as aura cmp and this Aura CMP component, I have successfully deployed on my Salesforce platform. So as you can see, this uh, this component has successfully deployed here. And uh, if I just fill up the details and click on Save button, so that it will save the record in an object and it will display a confirmation message. So let me explain you the uh, let me uh, let me explain you the, how do we create an Aura component by using Visual Studio. So the first of all, you have to set up the Visual Studio on your desktop, on your system. How to set up these Visual Studio code? How do we set up Salesforce CLI? Uh, in order to know more about this, I will, I will share the link. Those who have missed it or those who, are, those who will be doing this very first time, I will share the link in the, uh, in the description box so that you can visit that video and you can uh, you can have a look at how to download and install Salesforce CLI and the Visual Studio Code and how do we connect it. So the first thing I've did, the first thing I've done here is that first of all I have established a connection by using Authorize and Org app and I connected to my Salesforce org. That was step number one. In step number two, I right click on this Aura and I create a new Aura component here. By clicking on this Aura component, I create a new Aura component. So the, I, I name that Aura component name as Aura CMP. And as soon as I create an Aura component, it will add these supporting libraries. So these libraries will be these all are the uh, resources. A lot, uh, uh, these are the resources which we use to create, which, we, which gets automatically created whenever we create the Aura component by using developer console. So we have the files like Aura, Aura Docs, CMP, CMP, Meta XML, CSS, Design, SVG, Controller.js, Helper, and Renderer.js. These all are JavaScript files. So first of all, I designed my component by uh, in Aura CMP, .cmp, and here I just declare three attributes. First of all, Aura colon attribute. As you can see, Aura colon attribute. And uh, name is equal to C underscore name. Type is a string. Aura, so three attributes will be there, name, email, and phone. And they are of string type. Then I created one division. And I add the styling as a SLDS card. SLDS basically is a designing system. So lightning designs, lightning design system. And we use that lightning design system in order to add styling to this. I just add a heading to that, add new candidate record, and three input fields, one for candidate, one for email, one for phone number. And I set the candidate name as a required one. Mapping, this is actually we will be doing mapping here. So as all of you know that 
uh, this it's very important to do the mapping and here we'll be doing mapping. See what we'll be doing, we will be mapping these fields one by one with the attributes we have declared. So my first attribute is C name and I map this field with the attributes. And in order to refer, in order to do the mapping in lightning components or in all our components, we always use V uh, to refer to the attribute. So V dot C name, and I set the label as candidate name. Second field mapped with email, so V dot C email, and third is V dot C code. And then I created one button, lightning button, label as save record, and on click is equal to C dot save record. Save record is a custom function which we have declared in our custom controller class. And it's a client side controller class, you can say, and C is a reference in order to refer to the controller function. And this function we have declared in Aura component controller dot JS. So this is my Aura component controller JS, and this is a function name, as you can see. Uh, by default, when you click on Aura component controller dot JS, uh, there, there would be a default function, and I replace that default function with mine. This one save record, and the same function I'm going to call here. So that means whenever we click on a button, it is going to call this save record function here. Now in this save record function. First of all, I refer, I declare a variable called action. In this action, I'm going to refer with the candidate. Now, C dot add new candidate. So where is this add new candidate? So this basically, this add new candidate is nothing. This is a server side controller function. And this server side controller function, we will be declaring in our Apex class. So what I have done, I created one class as well. So as you can see in this aura, we used to have a classes. So I have declared one class name as or uh, lwcfx.cs. So I just created an FX class name as lwcfx.cls. And in this class, I declare a function with the aura enabled notation, add new candidate with three parameters. And this will be performing the insert operation in the candidate object. So that's the function name and the same function I have extend, extend here. Now, in order to call this function, in order to refer to this function, it's very important that you add this controller reference in Lightning component, in Aura component. So controller is equal to LWC Apex, and LWC Apex is our Apex controller, Apex class name. This is the name of the server-side controller class. And implements is equal to force app hostable. Uh, flexi page available for all page type. That means that we would like to make this component available to be deployed on the home page or or the uh, or at the other location. So it is similar the way we used to uh, the way we used to create a lightning component in the in developer console. So there, that time we used to check the check boxes. So here we don't have an option to check boxes, but here we have to add it manually. So I also add it in Excel is equal to you. Now in Aura component controller class, I declare an action. Then we need to set the parameters. So because this function takes three parameters, name, email, and phone, so we'll be passing parameters uh, by getting the value from the attributes one by one. So v dot c name, v dot c email, v dot c phone, and we just assign the values or we map the values to the attributes one by one. Then I create a function call fx colon dot set callback. This is the inbuilt function. I'm going to call this function. And this function basically it is used to uh, wait for the response by the, uh, by the server side controller class. And that server side controller class, once they complete the operation, whether, the, whether it's a success or it's a fail, it always returns a response. And that response will be tracking out here. So I just track it as a get state. And if the state is success, I just display alert message. If, the, if it is failed, I display a message called fail to commit record. And we can, and finally, at line number 23, I've added $a dot in queue action action. This is basically, this is the final statement in order to, uh, in order to initiate this action. So once we trigger this, once we save this, and finally what we have to do, we have to save this, and I'm going to deploy this once again. And once we click on deploy, all these files, all the, comp the, your, the your component and your FX class or the server side controller class will get deployed on your Salesforce platform. And once it gets deployed on the Salesforce platform, what we'll be going to do, we will be going to add that component here. And in order to do that, what we'll do, I'll just switch to edit page. I'll open, uh, I open edit page option, edit page. And in this edit page, 
we can see the component added here. See Aura CMP, and I drag and drop this Aura CMP here. This is my Aura CMP actually. See, this, that's the component. So component added successfully. I have placed the component on a home page. We can we have we can save this and then activate it if it is required. Finally, I click on back. And let's test it now. So, in order to test it, let me add a dummy record. So, I just write submit test and submit t890 at the rate gmail.com and at the rate gmail.com and phone number. And finally, when I click on save record, the record gets saved and it saves record committed successfully. That's a confirmation message. And we can just check it out. We can refer it, the record added successfully. The record committed successfully. Now, instead of the alert box, what we can do, we can display the message, the confirmation message. For that, we can use notification libraries. And in order to do that, you can follow my next video. In that, I will be going to explain the how do we use the notification libraries in order to display the confirmation or the error messages in Lightning components. So that's all in this video. If you have any questions or if you have any queries, you can reach out to us. You can visit our website, www.tatech1.com. You can contact us on the given numbers. So these, this will be the WhatsApp number, and you, or you can directly call on this number, or you can drop an email on this mail. Right? If you like this video, subscribe our channel, like this, or you can post your comments in comment box, and don't forget to press the bell icon to get the updates on the latest videos. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for watching. That's all for the day. See you soon. Bye.